Welcome back Tombs, with Phantom Liberty coming soon, I think it's important to look over the quest mechanics that exist within Cyberpunk 2077 that will likely be reused and may be even built upon in the upcoming expansion. Phantom Liberty has been presented and discussed as a spy thriller with political intrigue, meaning there should be plenty of complex decisions and hopefully lots of difficult choices. I've got over 2000 hours playing around in Cyberpunk since launch, so I've got plenty of experience to share. A lot of these topics deserve their own video, especially to show more examples, which I'll work on if this video does well. The first mechanic is decisions in the past or in flashbacks matter. There are many long-term decisions in Cyberpunk 2077 that players have to make without knowing their impact, and I assume this will also be the same in Phantom Liberty. Let's say, theoretically, that you have to play through more of Johnny's memories or interact with another engram and their memories may also leak into V's consciousness, then you may be able to play through scenes in the past. The main example I'm going through today is Alt Cunningham, who is a skilled netrunner and creator of Soul Killer. She is eventually captured and subjected to her own creation and turned into an engram. However, as Arasaka Tower is nuked, she escapes and eventually becomes an incredibly powerful AI, capable of surviving beyond the Black Wall. Eventually, V and Johnny will negotiate a deal with her to assist in saving V's life in exchange for access to Mikoshi. Towards the end of this meeting, Johnny will request a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Alt. However, she replies saying that his request is impossible and ends the conversation. Alt. Before you leave, we gotta talk. Just you and me. No, that will not be possible. Although, if at the end of the game, you decide to go with Johnny's suggestion and allow him to take the reins, he and Alt will have some alone time to converse. In the Rogue ending, Johnny will ask Rogue to go on a mission to take down Smasher, save V, and damage Arasaka. She, having relived a moment from the past with Johnny, will agree and discuss her plan, which she had always been working on, of raiding Arasaka whilst downing a satellite. While she calls in favours, it is Johnny's job to contact Alt Cunningham to ensure that she is on board. With V being suppressed by the pseudo-endo trizine that you get from Misty, this is the only moment in the present where they get some alone time. The tone and dialogue options in this conversation will be heavily impacted by the way you decide to treat Alt as Johnny in the past. At the time, Silverhand will be an asshole towards Alt, but exactly how much of a dick he'll be will depend on the player's choices. What? You're starting to remind me of me. 50 years back. Minus the charisma. An impressive cock. During the Johnny flashbacks, if you select these dialogue lines, hurling abuse at Alt, and decide to pull her hair, then she will be cold and provide minimal explanation about her plans in Mikoshi. However, if you did not select the blue dialogue, and let the timer run out before she leaves the room, she will go further in her explanation, and you will have access to very different dialogue lines. At the end of the meeting with Johnny and Alt, you will be provided with three options. If you select the wait, there's one other thing option, Alt's response will vary, and you will be provided with extremely different options depending on how you treated her in the flashbacks. Well, wait, just one other thing. I have no more time for you. Know what? Think you were right. Alt's gone. Oh, for Christ. Perfect. Go on. Fuck off. Fuck this. Well, wait. Just one other thing. We don't have much time. If you wish to say something, say it. Rogue's on board, too. Told me to tell you hi. Pretty funny, right? Like old times. Yes. It's funny. Alt. I'm been told I absolutely suck at these, but 
Maybe it's not too late for me to apologize. So, Alt, I'm sorry. For what happened to you. For what happened to us. Well... Yes. Yes what? Yes apology accepted? Or yes it's too late? Watch out for yourself, Johnny. Next, Cyberpunk's lack of cutscenes. Cyberpunk 2077 has often been critiqued for its infrequent use of cutscenes, however, there are many times in quests where this is a strength rather than a weakness. Essentially, it allows you to change your mind mid-dialogue or mid-quest. This means that you can leave mid-conversation and sometimes get hilarious responses. Do you have what they call a DD? Other times, leaving will end in quest failures, resulting in locking yourself out of certain options and even entire endings. For example, if you leave during the Riders in the Storm quest where you're tasked to save Sol, he will die, locking you out of the Alter Calder ending. Similarly, you can abandon River during the hunt, and if you return later, you will find him dead. Poor bastard. You just left him. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Also, you can even call Rogue for a date, then leave, locking yourself out of the Rogue ending. This even works in Judy's questline if you abandon her at Laguna Bend. Furthermore, there are a few times where you can have conversations at gunpoint and can finally put an end to the dialogue at different stages, resulting in unique consequences. For example, there's the I Walk the Line quest, where you are tasked by the Voodoo Boys to take down the Netwatch agent, Bryce Mosley. If you take your time discussing your options with Mosley, then he'll reveal that the VDB have put a virus in V and bargain with them to remove it. If you decide to not trust him and jack into him anyway, you'll be attacked by the virus and can be furious at Placide. Let's head to baddies. Have a little word with Placide. However, if you shoot him immediately, you can interpret the situation differently and believe that the attack was from Netwatch. Could have been Netwatch flatline me. VDBs might not even know I survived. Right, then Placide's face ought to light up like a Christmas tree when you show up alive. Also, when you go back to the Voodoo Boys, V will be frustrated not knowing what the term Ranyon means. Placide and I, we never quite saw eye to eye. Don't like being kept in the dark. <laughs> and I swear, if I hear any more moody fucking mumbling, which reminds me, just what the fuck is a Ranyon? Optional Objectives and Information Gathering Information gathering is an important part of Cyberpunk 2077 and will likely continue to be significant in the upcoming expansion. A lot of the optional objectives never appear on the job tracker at the top right of the screen and some will only appear after you find them. Not only are the optional objectives important for the different outcomes, but also your perspective on a situation can change drastically. A good example is the gig last login, where you have to retrieve a laptop from some scavs. Turns out, this basement was linked to the Ripper dock above, Charles, and if you search through the computers, you'll find messages about him discussing their long-standing cooperation. This means that he has been selling clipped or forcibly harvested parts to his customers. If you discover this email, you have the option to extort Charles for cheaper prices or execute him for working with the scabs. Another good example is the mission Gimme Danger where you hack Hanako's float. During this mission, providing you are a corpo, you can impersonate an officer working under Abernathy to freely walk through the premises. However, to unlock this option, you must first scan the guard from the rooftop and discuss it with Takemura. Overheard one of the guards. Stepped in some shit, he's worried about disciplinary action. And this helps us how? Know of a woman, Abernathy. Head of counterintel in Night City. Could say I'm acting on her behalf. Squeeze him. Still know my way around corporal procedures? 
An interesting proposal. Next, the most egregious example of the importance of information gathering is River's Quest, The Hunt. You, you can! He, he was sick! Weak! I just wanted to help him. In this side job, you are tasked to track down and rescue River's nephew, Randy, from the psychopath the aptly named Peter Pan. Despite Peter Pan already being captured, he is unconscious and cannot freely give information. However, River knows of an experimental procedure where they can record dreams as BDs and it's V's job to dive into them. There are a number of methods to find the correct location, including gathering enough evidence from the brain dances to deduce the location, visiting the farm beforehand, and having enough intelligence to hack the IP address. However, if you only scan the bare minimum, you will be given the option of two farm locations Edgewood Farm or Poppy Farm. Which means we got a coin toss. 50-50 chance of getting it right. Edgewood or Poppy. If you select Poppy Farm, you will arrive at the farm by Laguna Bend and have to fight Wraith. After clearing them out, River will state that you've been to the wrong farm and head towards Edgewood Farm. Despite eventually getting the correct farm, you will be too late and Randy will be found dead. River, who is distraught by the situation, blames V and himself for trusting V in the first place and wants to finish off Peter Pan. Hang on. You trying to blame me for the fuck up? It was my mistake. Thought you could help me. That we'd fare better together. Sometime later, River will message you stating that he killed him and covered his tracks. Finally, in the end credits, it will reveal that he's in jail for getting into a bar fight over someone trash talking the kids in the barn. Last night I was sitting at the bar just minding my own business when some guy starts mouthing off about the kids on the farm, saying that they must have enjoyed being hooked up like cows, that they had it coming. Of course, I told him to shut his fucking mouth or else. Surprise, surprise, he didn't listen. So we took it outside and... You know what happens next. They're holding me at the precinct in Little China. You know where. Holler if you can help your old river out one last time. Thanks. However, if you save Randy, he still wants to murder Peter Pan, but he doesn't go through with it. Next up, Ignoring mission objectives. There are multiple instances where ignoring the mission objectives listed on the job tracker is an option that leads to unique consequences or unique dialogue. One of the most prominent examples is in the mission Search and Destroy. During this mission, Yu and Takamura have kidnapped Hanako to confront her with the truth that her brother Yorinobu has murdered her father. However, you are interrupted by a heavily armored squad of Parasaka soldiers and you fall a couple of floors to ground level. As you regain consciousness, Johnny tells you to leave him and that you'll die if you go and save him. Last chance to get the fuck out of here! Takamura! Can't leave him back there! Forget him, guy's toast! Unless you want to wind up like him! The job tracker at the top right also just tells you to leave the building. However, with reinforced tendons, cyberware, you can jump right up, or you can go via the stairs and get the optional objective to save Takamura. Saving Takamura will result in him accompanying you in the Arasaka ending, supporting V the entire way, and visiting V in orbit to help them come to terms with their imminent death and provide V with their options. Another example is again in the mission I Walk the Line. There are a number of orders from Placide that are listed on the job tracker, including meeting with the Voodoo Boys outside the GIM and locating and jacking into the van or camionette. Hacking the van allows Placide and the other VDB to learn how much of their local independent net was compromised by Netwatch. However, you can ignore this objective and continue onward. 
Afterwards, Placide will be angry that you ignored him and did not check the van. You know do your trick. You did not check camionette at the camera. I would have if somebody hadn't flatlined me. Sorry, but lost the heart to do anything after that. Quest order. Cyberpunk 2077 has a non-linear storyline and the order in which you complete quests can be experimented with over multiple playthroughs. Turns out, there's a lot of different consequences including dialogue lines, text messages, and major actions that change when experimenting with quest order. A common example is completing the gig Monster Hunt and taking down or killing Jotaro Shobo. Jotaro is a Tiger Claw who owns the Ho-Oh Club and scrolls brutal XPDs. When completing this quest, you can either kill him yourself or hand his unconscious body to the Mox. Jotaro receive. The Mox will gladly take him off my hands, give him a taste of his own meds. Thanks, gig shut. Regardless, the news of his brutal death can be used against Woodman, who is in a similar situation managing clouds. Threatening Woodman by revealing that V was the one that took down Jotaro will result in him giving up the information on Evelyn without question. What Shobo had was a very unfortunate meeting with me. Just happened to be his last. Wouldn't want this to be your last meeting, would ya? Of course not. Never wanted to be anything like Shobo. Another example of the impact of quest order is when you decide to complete the Alder Calder questline. You are initially introduced to Pan Am through Rogue while you are tracking down Hellman, the engineer and creator of the biochip. After completing the quest life during wartime, the Alder Calder questline is unlocked, and if you decide to complete it before starting Act 3, it has unique consequences. Normally, after saving Takamura, he messages you letting you know that he survived, but there's more work to do. However, if you have completed the main Alder Calder questline, then you can reply telling him that you'll side with the Nomads rather than working with Hanako. Similarly, if you completed the Alder Calder questline before V's first meeting with Old Cunningham, then when discussing the plan to save V's life, Johnny will mention that you've already made some friends with some dusty nomads. Great, so we got a plan. But how will you reach Mikoshi? I've created armies that failed to breach it. They were children of the net. There's your problem. We're banking on the human factor. V's got a big dusty nomad family, and they'll do anything for her. We'll crack a window, slip you into Makoshi. By far, the most complex example of quest order is V's relationship or affinity with Johnny Silverhand. Currently, Johnny and V's relationship comes to its end in their final meeting inside Mikoshi. Excluding the Arasaka ending, you as the player get to decide whether to give V's body, who is now compatible with Johnny, to him, or return it to V with a limited time left to live. The other three endings, the Elder Calder, Rogue, or Secret ending, have multiple versions influenced by two main factors. The first is what you decide to tell Johnny at the Pistis Sophia during part three of the mission known as Tapeworm, and the second is the percentage on the meter that is shown in the menu. During the meeting at the Pistis Sophia, Johnny states that he is willing to sacrifice himself for V and asks if V would take a bullet for him as well. Imagine we're deployed together, fighting in a war, side by side. Would you take a bullet for me? Although there is an option to say don't know, Johnny will demand a yes or no response, but the result of this will only appear in that final meeting between Johnny and V inside Mikoshi. The second factor, the percentage on the meter, will be influenced by how much of Johnny's questline you complete and what you say to him during the conversation at the oil fields where you unlock the secret ending. The earliest that you can complete one of those three endings is at 25%, whereas the latest is at 70%. While not every percentage change from 25 to 70 leads to different dialogue or actions, a lot of them do. 
and it's spread out over different versions of this final decision. Hey, Johnny. How oh, packed you wash out? Got your one-way ticket. This funny to you? You know, discovered one nice thing about becoming Johnny Silverhand. You stop giving the slimmest shit about Johnny Silverhand. That right. This mean you've already decided what comes next? The Makoshi version that has the clearest contrast is the one in the Rogue ending. In the Rogue ending, V forfeits control of their body and hands the control to Johnny, meaning in this version of Makoshi, you get to see how your V would react. If you try to take the body as Johnny and chose no at the Pista Sevilla, V will react violently. Are you fucking kidding me? There are no options, you two-faced sack of shit! You're out, I'm in. That was the deal. Okay, easy. I think too big a dose of silver hand wound up in my blood. Need to chill. Listen. If I had to choose who to hole up with on a desert island, it wouldn't be you. Ever. Hell, the whole cast of little big corporal rats would have you beat. Because you're a dickhead. In a big way. I'm sure plenty of others out there are more deserving of life. But even so, I never wish you dead. Promise me one thing, asshole. You won't forget me. However, if you choose to sacrifice Johnny, V will react differently depending on if you completed Johnny's questline or not. At 40% synergy, V interrupts Johnny while they're conversing, stating that they still have a life left to live and that Johnny should go. You can honestly talk in circles till the goddamn sun implodes. But I told you once already and haven't changed my mind. I still got a life to live. So you should go. On the bridge towards cyberspace, V will only appear once and acknowledge that they will never forget Johnny. Johnny. Don't make this any harder, eh? Just don't forget I came around. I won't. Ever. However, if you complete Johnny's questline and reach 70% and selected no, V will regard Johnny as their friend. If you're not ready to die, then you're gonna live. Johnny, my friend. This time on the bridge, V will appear three times, showing how much their friendship has improved or grown. Johnny, I'm sorry. Never thought I'd actually come to like you, but I have. I really do now. If I only could, I'd turn back time. To that moment I got my hands on the fucking ship. Don't need to explain, V. But I do. Even though it's simple. I'm not ready to die yet, Johnny. I want to live. Exactly nothing's changed since that time we talked at the Piss to Sophia. Johnny. Don't make this any harder, eh? Just... 
Don't forget I came round. Remember me. Of course, there are variations for saying yes, V is willing to sacrifice himself for Johnny, but I'll discuss those in a future video. You said you'd take a bullet for me. Yeah, and I haven't changed my mind. But this bullet's aimed my way. So I just gotta make sure I don't drag you down into the grave with me. Next, there's life paths. So the three life paths, Street Kid, Nomad, and Corpo, have a range of impacts on quests. Sometimes they add small bits of information, and other times it's similar to an attribute check like Intimidating with Strength or an Intelligence check. However, the biggest impact of life paths is changing the perspective of existing missions and having unique consequences. For example, the Nomad life path combined with Quest Order. There's a gig from Wakako called Olive Branch where you have to deliver a car from Sergei to the Tiger Claws. At first, this may seem like a simple delivery mission and reference to John Wick since it involves a hitman and killing their dog. And they also have little dog, Gospody. What kind of hitman goes around with dog? This misunderstanding involve you shooting him? It was worse, much worse. However, as you drive the car towards the drop-off point, you'll start hearing yelling and pleading from the car. Help! Is anyone out there? If you decide to open it, you'll have a discussion with a corpo, and he will compensate you for letting him live. You got this job from Makako, yes? I will pay her. She won't close an aid, and neither will you. Although, if you are a nomad and completed the gig guinea pigs, then an entirely different conversation will occur. Just as a reminder, in the gig guinea pigs, you are tasked to neutralize Joanne Koch, a biotechnica corpo who is wanted for experimenting on and flatlining over 70 nomads in the process. The families of the deceased pull the eddies together to hire a merc to dispose of her. I personally prefer taking her down non-lethally, so you can deliver her to the nomads via flying trash bin. If you completed Olive Branch, then V will identify the Corpo as another biotechnical worker who worked with Joanne Koch. This should influence your decision about whether you spare him or deliver him to the Tiger Claws. Biotechnica, huh? Assuming you know Joanne Coke. I do, I do. I did a prim little project with her out in the Badlands. What about you? Yeah, I heard all about that project. Real triumph. Wonder how many from Red Ochre died. You recall? Ah, who can keep track? Besides, they're like roaches. Disgusting things will just multiply again. Not your lucky day after all. What? Did I say? Wait! We must have other mutual friends! Once again, there are many other examples to go through, and I'll make another video on life paths in the future. Of course. Thanks everybody for watching, hope you found these interesting. There are some topics that I've already gone over, like stealth versus guns blazing, so check that video out if you haven't already. I also plan on making videos on some of the topics that I've shown in this video with more examples and details, so be sure to subscribe. See you next time, tunes. V, don't know if you can hear me, but thanks for trusting me. Let's do this.